Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 19, part C. We're in chapter 5, section 2. This is part 3 of section 2. So, last time we learned how to use a tree diagram to find uh, the sample space and probabilities of compound events. And this was with sampling with replacement. So, to remind us of what we did, we said we had a statistical process that we want to perform, and we have a jar with three colors of marbles, three green, two red, five blue, for a total of 10. We're randomly selected um, one marble, recorded its color, put it back, randomly selected a second one, recorded its uh, color, and then put it back, and then we calculated probabilities and we use this tree diagram to do so. So we learned that in the last video that, I will change colors here, the probability of R and G is equal to the probability of G and R. And we said at least in this case where we have independent events or we have constant probabilities or we're sampling with replacement. So, we use the fact in this above uh, example that by replacing the marble that was selected, the probability of a green marble on the second selection did not change when we selected a red marble on the first selection or draw. In other words, these each selection or draws were independent of each other. And so this brings us to a definition of two independent events. So two events, A and B, are considered to be, uh, or said to be, independent of each other if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability that the other event will occur. Okay? So if A occurs, the probability of B occurring after A does not change. Likewise, if um, B occurs, then the probability of A occurring after B has will not change. It stays the same. The book, I don't know if our book does this, but most books um, use a very simple definition of dependent events, but for an introductory class, I don't think this is quite good enough. They usually say, if events are not independent, then they are dependent. But what does that mean? Well, when we look at the, the definition for independent events, we're going to uh, do the opposite of this, or you might think of it as taking the complement of the independent events. The occurrence of one event, if one event occurs, it's going to change or affect the probability of the other event. So once one event occurs, it the probability of the second event changes. So they're conditioned upon each other. So the probability of, let's say, A um, after B occurs um, changes, we say. But so the probability of A depends on if B, oops, has already occurred. Okay? So, here's an example. We're going to go back to the jar with the marbles, and we're going to change the rules for how we select the marbles. Now we're going to select them and without replacement. We are not going to replace the marbles. And this is going to change things. We're going to end up with dependent events. So let's take a look at this with our tree diagram. I've already written this out since we've done this once before. But I'm going to change, I'm going to take and uh, mark all these out so we can walk through that, what's important here. So for the first marble, we still have 10 total marbles 
which is the denominator. So remember, the probability of A is equal to the number of times or ways A can occur. And that's not very clear, is it? Let me rewrite that so we can all read it. Number of ways A can occur divided by the number of items in our sample space S. Okay. So the probability of red was two, because there was two red. There's two red, three green, and five blue marbles. So there's 10 total. But once we have selected a red marble, oops, once we've selected a red marble, we no longer have 10 marbles in the jar because we kept that red marble. So since we had two to start with and we kept one, then we only have one remaining. And we have one less marble than we did at the beginning because we kept that one marble. So it's one out of nine. Now, for the green on the second draw, we still have three green, oops, three green marbles, but we drew a red on the first draw, and now there's only nine marbles left. Similarly, when we draw blue, there's still five blue because we didn't draw a blue on the first time. We drew a red, but again, there's only nine marbles uh, in the jar at this point, so our chances of getting a blue marble after we've drawn a red marble changes to five over nine. We're going to do the same thing for the other six cases. So green, uh, three-tenths, there's going to be nine in the denominator of all of these. Okay? Because we've kept one marble. So for the red, we'd still have two here after selecting the green, but we'd only have two green marbles after selecting one green marble the first time. And then for the blue, there's still five marbles, but now out of nine. If we select a blue marble first, then there's still two red marbles, and there's still three green marbles, but now there's only four blue marbles, and this is out of uh, nine total. So let's take the first one. We're going to take two tenths, so this uh, two tenths for a red, and then for another red, we'll have one ninth. So when we multiply these fractions, remember we multiply the two numbers on the top, two times one is two, and then we multiply the numbers on the bottom, so that gives us 90. So this probability now is two out of 90 instead of, oops, that's not very clear, is it? Instead of four out of 100. So 2 out of 90 is going to be smaller than um, 4 out of 100, I believe. Let me just make sure. Higher math again. So 2 divided by 90 is about 0 0.0222. And yes, so 4 out of 100 is 0 0.04. So the probability of getting two red marbles in this case is less than it was when we did it with replacement. Now let's look at the red and then green. So again, we're going to multiply the top, uh, the 2 times the 3, and we get 6 over 90 because 9 times 10. So the denominator in all of these is going to be the same. It's going to be 90. And this is very nice, and it's the reason I do not uh, simplify or reduce the fractions because I can add all these up because they have common denominators. This makes it easy. Okay, so 2 times 5 is 10. Now, previously, we, so this is 10 over 90. 
Now 10 over 90, 10 divided by 90 is equal to 0 0.11111. Okay, it keeps going. But 10 out of, previously it was 10 out of 100. And so we would be dividing by a bigger number, the 100. And so that probability is smaller. The numerator stayed the same in this case um, because we didn't draw a blue marble the first time. We, and we had two reds, so 2 times 5 is 10. So the probability of this went up uh, from 0 0.10 to 0.1111 and keeps going. Okay? So that probability increased the probability for getting the same colors decreased because we said 2 divided by 90 was 0.22222. Now, 0.222 was 0 0.040. So this probability decreased the probability of two reds. The probability of two different colors increased. Because remember that the total probability for the sample space always has to add up to 1. So we'll quickly go through the rest. So again, we're multiplying the numerators, the numbers on the top. So 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 5 is 15. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 4 is 20. If we add these up, I've got, I'm starting over on the left, 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 10 is 18, plus 6 is 24, plus another 6 is 30, plus 15 is 45, plus 10 is 55, plus 15 is 70, and then plus 20 is 90. So we have 1. They add up to 1. That's great. Now we want the probability of R, well, I have it written down here, of R and G. So use a different color, maybe purple. Here is R and G, and here's the probability. It's 6 over 90. Now, how did we get this? This was equal to the probability of red times the probability of green after red had occurred. After red occurred. Okay, and we're going to do some notation for this. And as I said, the probability changes when we make a selection um, without, or yes, without replacement. The first event and the second event are not independent of each other. They are dependent. Okay? And what we have been using here is called the multiplication rule. For all the probabilities uh, for, uh, for compound events here, we've used something called the multiplication rule. And so the, it says that the probability of two events, uh, that two events both occur, this means an and, is the product of their probabilities. In other words, we multiply their probabilities. Okay. So when we had independent events, this is a special case of the multiplication rule. It says that the probability of A and B is simply equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. But we need something for dependent events. So this brings us to something called conditional probability. Okay. And we will pick up here in the next video. This is a good stopping point. So we've gone over the uh, independent uh, or the multiplication rule for independent events. It's here. And in the next video, we'll discuss conditional probability and how it relates to dependent events. Please remember to update your formula sheet. It's yours, so um, you can put on there what you need to so that you can quickly do homework problems or uh, do problems in 
class exercises and you don't have to search through your notes for something uh, that you can't find. If you have questions about the course content, please ask. I am happy to help you. Also, please take care of yourself. Stay safe because we want to see you here next time.